Well, hey, and everybody, welcome to the Real Estate of Mind Show. We're your hosts, Glenn and Amber. Hello, everybody. We uh, we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. And today we have another great show lined up for you. So let's jump right in. It's a woman's show today. Yep. Today I'm super excited because we're going to be talking about women in real estate, something that um, has been kind of a male-dominated industry, but we're going to talk about how more and more women are getting involved in it. And the whole purpose of this podcast is I hope that after you leave here, no matter how old you are, what age you are, that you feel empowered, that you feel like you have choices, that you are excited about the future. So really, we've always had a unique business. Amber just, you just said that it's a, been a male dominated industry for a long time because it's construction, right? So it's construction, it's contracts, it's lawyers, all that kind of stuff. So for some reason, that's always been kind of a male dominated industry. You think of a house flipper or someone does the work. The truth of the matter is when Amber and I started, that was never the case with us. So we were always different. Um, I did all the buying and the selling and the looking pretty. And of course that was my job. <laughs> He's still a work in progress. Yeah, still going on that. <laughs> never did quite reach that goal. Um, but I did all the, the buying, the selling, the, um, you know, I got to manage the actual shit job. So I got to manage the actual like the sewage and that kind of stuff, but um, uh, septics, sewer systems, whatever, right, that uh, basements. But Amber was really in charge of the project management. So she managed the contractors. So many times people would actually come up to me and they, the contractors would look at me and talk to me and I'm like, I don't know why you're talking to me, she's in charge. But just, it was a male, dom they just kept, and to this day sometimes they'll come to me, I'm like, well now they know. Now they're like, Glenn, does, Glenn just writes the checks. I don't know, he doesn't know what he's doing. So. Yeah, we're, we're gonna get into a little more of that and as we go along So I jumped here, ahead but, a little yeah. bit? Well, you usually do, so that's nothing new. Sorry about that. <laughs> Anywho, so moving along, it was male dominated, but our industry has always been very different because they expected her to be in sales and me to be in project management, and it was just the exact opposite. So I'm gonna shut up because she has info for you. And the purpose of this podcast, I mean, there's you know a, a million different ways you can be a real estate investor. You can buy and hold, you can have you know short-term rentals, you can do flips. So we're, the, specifically, this podcast is really gonna be focused around um, women in the flipping world. So you've got five tips you're gonna get people on how to be successful yep. in real estate. Exactly. Um, and number one is gonna be to use the skills that you already have. Yep. So one thing that I've noticed as a coach um, with men, women, whoever, but particularly with women is that you lack confidence. Um, not in every single case, but in a lot of cases, it's just that lack of confidence that keeps people from moving forward into a field that they're really interested in. You know, we know. We, that's, we have, that's not just women, that's probably no, men too. It's both. But, but it, we're talking about women specifically and some of the yeah. some of the issues that are probably more prevalent with women than they yeah, are men. Yeah, it could be. be because it's perceived male dominated industry right then they make it a little worse for for a woman coming in with self-confidence but you know we at our at our workshops we have so many women that come up to us all we the do. time and send us questions and say you know i watch all the hd tv shows i just love to do this but i'm just so scared or i have all this fear and really it's, it's it does stem from that lack of confidence but yeah. what i have come to realize and and helped people through is taking those um skills that you already have already have and just learning how to transfer those into flipping houses. So what does this mean? So women in general, you know, wives, moms, working women, we already have those skills in place. Um, think about what kind of life we have um, at our, you know, we manage our homes, we manage even, even going to the grocery stores like inventory management. We, we have all these skills that we can transfer into the business world. You have to manage your husband. That's true, because be many honest, times guys. our husbands are like having another child. <laughs> well, that was necessary, but anyways. Um, you know, we, we are masters of multitasking. A lot of times we are working moms to begin with, or working women, and then we have um, the kids' schools to, you know, all, getting them to school to manage, and all of their school events, and the sports, and the doctor's appointments, and the dentist appointments, and vacations, and, you know, we, we already do all of that multitasking yeah. anyway. Negotiating. I mean, <laughs> stop. if you have Negotiate kids. Negotiate with our son constantly. Oh my you? goodness. He doesn't stop he's negotiating. four years old, and he's like this master negotiator. I don't know where he gets that from. Uh-huh. So... You know, we, we have learned all of these skills. Like I said, we're mostly going to be talking about the flipping and project management side during this podcast. But negotiating is a part of what we do, too, because you have totally. to, you know, to, to in order to have a Non-stop. successful life, you need to buy it right. So yeah. you negotiate to buy the house. You negotiate with the contractors for the, um, the price that you're going to get the work done for. And 
so forth. So you've already got the skills, right? Now you start using those skills to your advantage as a real estate investor. So remember, what Amber just talked about, you've already got those skills you're using. I mean, you may not have realized that those are skills that you're using, but every time you're negotiating or you're telling your husband to pick up something for the 14 millionth time or you know whatever it might be. The clothes um, go in the laundry basket, yeah. not on the floor in front of it. Hey, I've gotten better at that. <laughs> I, past you two have. years, I've gotten very good. I've had to, I, you know. Negotiating. I was managed. <laughs> Put it that way. All right, so moving along. So what, use those skills to your advantage, right? You've already got them, so use them to your advantage. Yep, so managing contractors is not a lot different than running an adult daycare, for real. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's learning, you know, just like when you have kids, every kid learns a little bit differently. They learn at a different pace. Different things make them tick. Different um, forms of um, consequences or discipline work for one child, but not the other. They have different communication styles. Yeah. You know, there's contractors are no different so you have to learn kind of what makes each one tick you know some contractors are yes men and those can be nice but you also have to know that if you have a yes man on the job that the job's probably going to get strung out a lot longer so you have to be willing to <laughs> one of our that favorite concession. contractors was a yes man was there two one of our, our favorite contractors yes that's true two of our favorites over the years were our were yes men the yes 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 you say just be honest with me will you be done tomorrow yeah 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 yes and then every then you get frustrated and we finally had to let him go after many many years it kind of broke our heart we're like oh, i love these yeah. guys but it's yeah the yes men so anyways yeah it, let's not talk about con that's a whole different podcast contractors it but. is but the point is that you already have these skills and you know just like you have to learn and maybe it's not kids maybe it's um that you are in a management role at your work and you have to learn how the different personalities you know salespeople are a perfect example of it they all kind of have the things that make them tick that makes them tick contractors <laughs> are the exact same way you have to learn how to manage each personality um some people you, you know you can't give an inch to or else they'll take a mile um, some people, some contractors take more management but the, than others, but once you kind of learn that and use those skills that you already have to do that, and then it makes it a lot more easy. So number two is to be confident. So one was to use the skills you already have, and two is to be confident. Um, how are you confident when you're not confident? One thing you can do is educate yourself as best you can in the situation. So if you're walking into a house and maybe it's on electrical, or maybe it's on um, some construction questions, or um, I'll paint's the wrong thing to talk about with education, but whatever it might be, if you educate yourself a little beforehand, talk to the professionals, go to your Home Depots, or go to whatever, talk to professionals beforehand, get a little educated so you understand the language, and you can kind of understand how it goes, bring somebody with you, bring a, con bring a good friend, bring, if you have a husband or a spouse that knows that, or an, an uncle, or a brother, or a good friend that understands the construction world, hey, I used to do that in the early days, you know, I'd bring a good friend of mine who was a contractor, and have him just listen to the information, didn't have to say a word, but sometimes just having somebody there quiet listening, they realize that, uh oh, somebody else is there and that'll help you have some confidence. One tip to do that as well is to just have somebody else there with you. Um, you the, can, the, oh, go ahead. No, feel free. It's a woman's show, so just interrupt me. <laughs> go right ahead. You know what I mean? Yes, dear. Well, you were talking about having the contractor, your contractor friend go with you, but another really good thing that um, people can do is before you ever buy a house, we always encourage someone new, especially to have a home inspector go through the house. And so you wanna follow that person around like a little puppy dog, you know, absorb everything that they're looking at, absorb everything that they're telling you, you know, find one that's kind of friendly, that doesn't mind kind of showing you the ropes, and that's a perfect person to learn what to look for. That's exactly what I was gonna say when you were out to me, so thank you for saying what I was gonna say. I appreciate that, honey, so <laughs> I do love you. Uh, so next is to, I would recommend never telling a contractor it's your first deal. If you call up and show weakness out of the gates, that's not gonna help you be confident. If you call up and say, I'm not really sure, I've never done this before, and I don't even know what lumber looks like, and I don't even know, you can't play that dumb blonde thing when you go into, you just can't do that. If you try and do that with a contractor, I'm telling you, most of the time, almost, not every time, so don't get mad at me and give me hate mail if you're a contractor, but most of the time, they'll take advantage of that and be able to, you know, just like going into a, auto repair shop they tell you, you got to replace the phalange valve and you're like okay and I wouldn't even know I'm like okay I have one of those didn't even know that right this plane doesn't even have a phalange that's from the <laughs> friend friends scene right <laughs> so the plane doesn't have a phalange Phoebe's alter ego name was um, Regina phalange, or phalange something yes like that. so so I you know I'd encourage you to um don't tell the contractor okay. it's your first deal Tell them you have partners. You know, again, bring that other person with you if you want to. But if you want to, if you have a coach or if you have a team you're working with or even your finance person or someone that you're getting tips from or advice from, 
you mentioned that you have a team. So I'm gonna bring that back to my partner and I'll ask that question. Take notes while they're talking. Say, okay, okay. If you don't know what they're saying, just go, okay. You put a big question mark for yourself, but don't say, huh. But ask a lot of questions and say, I'm not familiar with that term. What, to, what is that again? All right, that makes sense. And, and hopefully you know some of your basic terms. If you educate yourself beforehand, you'll have a little bit more confidence going into the conversation. So make sure that you're, you have confidence when you're going through that. Yeah, that's an interesting point too. You know, if you don't know what something is, if the contractor's talking about the soffit or a cantilevered edge or something like that, go home and Google it. Look it up on YouTube. I mean, there's all sorts of resources you can use to find out. Look, you can things. Google it on site while you're there too. Right. We, we, live, we live in a world of having access at our fingertips all the time. And I can't tell you how many times if I didn't, if I don't know something, I'll just Google it. You can sneak off and say, well, listen, I'm going to look out back here for a minute and just go out there and go, uh, what is the cantilevered edge? Oh, God. And then you walk back and say, got it. So I know about the cantilevered edge mentioned again. And you can educate yourself on the fly. If you don't have a coach, you're not learning from a, a system or a process like ours, by all means, educate yourself. Yeah. And as we're talking about confidence, I have to shine a little light on this subject too. You know, it's really easy to blame someone else for, and I was guilty of that when we first started because I, I didn't um, command the respect from the contractors that I should have in the beginning. And that's the whole point of this podcast is hope, to hopefully help you shorten that learning curve. But I used to just think, oh my gosh, these guys are just all a bunch of male chauvinist pigs and you know, they treat me like I'm stupid and they just think I'm some dumb blonde from Texas. And you know, I kind of had all these excuses going on. But as our business grew and as I started getting more experience and more confidence in myself, I realized that at least 50% of that, maybe more um, of that lack of respect was not on them, it was on me. Interesting because I, I lacked the confidence. And so mm -hmm. once I became more confident, then I just kind of automatically commanded it, not in a really obvious way, but it's just like, just the conversations I would have with the guys or whatever, just they suddenly became different. They suddenly, be, and, and these weren't necessarily even guys I had already known. They were contractors that I had just met or, you know, it, but but a lot of that was on me. People sometimes mirror your people sometimes mirror your image. Right. So if you are if you're showing not confidence, you're showing weakness. They might they might mirror that a little bit more, or at least they'll see that. But if you're showing some confidence, they'll they'll mirror that as well. Right. They'll rise to the occasion usually as your how you speak. If you come in there, and you're going, I don't know, and I'm so lost. I've got all this money in my checking account to spend. I just don't know where to spend it all. You act like that. Guess what? You're going to spend it all in the wrong place. But you come in, you're confident. You say. No, that's not my budget. No, my budget's this. I'm gonna take a look around. And you start acting confident, they're gonna rise to the occasion as well and they'll change the whole tone of the conversation. So there are ways though, until you have that experience, that you can, you know, you don't have that confidence automatically. But what you can do is you can draw on life experiences that you may have had. So if, if, for those of you that have maybe had children, were you totally confident the day you brought your kid home from the hospital, your baby home from the hospital? Were you confident about, <laughs> about no. how it was gonna go or the first time the baby had a fever or why is my baby crying, not to mention that you're hormonal and have a lack of sleep and everything else. That, wasn't, that was a time of your life where you just plugged along and just had confidence that you knew it was gonna be okay and here's the thing, you figured it out as you went along. You don't have to know everything there is to know about real estate or about construction or about flipping houses or even about managing contractors, but you do have to know that you'll get through it. Have, have enough confidence in yourself to get through it and draw on that life experience. Yeah, because it, it's systematic. I mean, you, after a while, <clears throat> flipping houses and real estate investing can be very systematic. There's lots of changes that happen, little nuances in there, but for the most part, it's very systematic as you go through the process. So once you get good at the system, you'll start having more confidence. Like you said, you'll have more confidence as you go through that process and go from there. So number three is develop a tough exterior. You should have no problem teaching that one, honey. <laughs> Well, I kind of came with one. So do you want to tell, I wasn't, I didn't have this in the notes, but do you want to tell them the joke about the gift that you gave me when we were dating? Huh. How deep do you want to get in this? this thing? How deep do we want to get? That's ah, a podcast. Let's go for it. So, you know, everybody comes with baggage, right? You know, some people more than others. I had a lot of baggage, I'm Just not saying. gonna lie. So uh, I, hadn't, I didn't notice. So, But you love me anyway. I do, very much. And so I had decided early on that no matter what it took, I was gonna get through that tough, prickly, gangrene covered exterior because it was very protective of her heart. I think it was more like brick and mortar. I don't think I would describe it as gangrene and yeah, that's a little, 
Yes, dear. We'll go with her <laughs> thing. So I'm trying to tell you that's not what, anyway, anywho, dear. So it was a very, very tough exterior that was well protected with lots of armor and lots of things. So the brick and mortar piece is what, what, what I bought. So for Christmas one year, I bought her a decorative, because if you know Amber, she likes her design and decoration. So I bought her a decorative little hammer. And on the note, on the card, I said, as long as it takes, I will pick away at you to like get to that heart. So <laughs> I believe and I'm, I believe I'm there. So <laughs> very did. good. I love you. So, um, so what does it mean to, to develop this tough exterior? It, and particularly, we're just gonna talk about contractors. Don't wear your heart on your sleeve. Um, don't take things personally. Always make business decisions and not emotional decisions. And you know, I, I, if a guy was saying this, he might get in trouble for it, but women, mm -hmm. Women in particular, you know, we can be a little more emotional than men can. That is not no. a hard and fast rule and, you no. know, er everything has its exceptions. But typically women can be more emotional and can tend to make more emotional decisions. So... I don't know. I'm pretty emotional, though. <clears throat> you are. You're kind of like a girl when it comes to that. She's very kind to me. <laughs> I break through her heart and that's what I get back. Isn't that nice? What a lovely, what a lovely little thing she is. God bless her. But you're my mainly man <laughs> with a girl's heart. All right, let's go. Okay. So, um, <laughs> the girl's heart, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> all right, so I'm a transgender all of a sudden, I don't know what happened there. But then, you know, even when it comes to making business decisions versus emotional decisions, um, that can be with a contractor, but it can also be even when you're trying to decide what house to buy. You know, let's say you put in an offer on a house and you know it's in a multiple bid situation and you just like have to have this house because you can already see in your mind what it's going to look like when it's done, you're getting emotional there. You want to look at the numbers and do the, you know, do the facts. And when people use our home flipping evaluator, yeah. you can see what your maximum allowable offer is. Yep. So do the facts um, support your offer? You know, can you still make money on this house and it be a business decision, not an emotional decision? That holds true when you deal with contractors too. You're dealing with anything. The order is late or whatever. Right. You can definitely get pissed off and angry and upset and cry and all those things that can happen man or woman, but like you said, women may tend to be more emotional at times. So um, if you get more emotional about that, you will you'll you might lash out at somebody where you normally didn't need to. You know what I mean? You might make a different decision if you don't be so emotional about things, right? Yeah, guys never do that. Whatever. We, we stay mature all the time. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe it's you're putting a fist through a wall or something. <laughs> I don't know anything about that either. I'm not aware of that. So, um... I don't recall that, Your Honor. The next point that I want to talk about, though, is when you're... When you're developing this relationship with a contractor because real estate is all about relationships whether it's with real estate agents whether it's with contractors with, you know the buyers and sellers and everything so when you're developing this relationship with the contractor it's important to be friendly but don't become friends with them yeah that's true because when you cross that friend boundary yeah things can go quickly downhill because you know they start taking advantage they you know, when it comes time for, you know, they requesting payment and they say they're 50% done, but you don't agree, you know, things can just get sketchy there and it, it gets, gets harder to it say gets no. Muddy, it gets muddy in the relationship. If you're having lunch with somebody or having a drink with them or you bring them a six pack on the job and then you're having a drink with them after, you know, and you're getting a little bit too friendly and familiar, then when the push comes to shove and they need more money, who will they go to? You, right? If they have another job they have to start and they've got three jobs lined up and they have to ask somebody to step aside it won't be a new customer it'll be the friend that understands and so that is what can cloud that relationship and really make it challenging for you because then how you know my brother said something one time he said you never never hire somebody you can't fire mm -hmm. you know so it's an interesting thought with a contract don't get so close that you can't fire them if you have to because you need to keep that business relationship like amber said keep that tough exterior because you have to have that in place so that you can make the decisions you have to to get to the end goal you get in business to make money and to have a better future you're not here you're not flipping houses for fun it's not always fun flipping houses the end result can be pretty great but it's an, every day is not a fun day. Right. And so you've got to have that tough exterior getting through that. So it's a, that's an important piece. Yeah, so it's really important to keep that boundary because otherwise things can get kind of sticky and uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, command respect. That's part of developing that tough exterior is, and that, and that goes back to what I was saying about in the beginning, a lot of that was on me because I wasn't commanding the respect. And I don't mean you have to be a bitch about it. There, right. there are ways to command thing. respect without being bitchy about it. One of my good friends, um, uh, growing up, his mom never yelled, never screamed, but she stayed very quiet. And if she was upset, she'd stay quiet and look and say, I'm disappointed. 
that strength, that inner strength was like, he said, that was that was the worst dagger. I wish you would slap me, he said. I wish you would scream at me. But she was just very um, soft-spoken about it. So you don't have to be soft-spoken. You have to find a balance there. But screaming and stuff doesn't, that's not what Amber means by that. No. You've got to command respect so people know that, okay, I don't want to let her down. I want to get this done because I don't want to be at her bad side. Yeah, you can you can set up expectations, you can set up deadlines, you can set up benchmarks. You know, those, by, by doing that, again, just like raising kids, you know, you give them a deadline to get something done. You give them the, <laughs> those guidelines, you give them those house rules. You know, when, I just thought of this too, whenever I develop my scope of work, and we give this to all our students as well, um, there's a sheet in the beginning of that that says expectations. Yes. And it and it outlines exactly what they are. You know, no smoking or drinking on the job. You know, turn the heat down in the winter. Here's what I expect as far no as flushing, quality. No flushing thin set or grout down the toilet drains. Or drains, yeah. Or the sink drain. Ask us how we know that one. Yeah. Mo on multiple occasions. Multiple jobs, I know. Um, you know, th but there's a whole page that outlines my expectations for the job. And I go over that with every new contractor that we sign a contract with. So, yeah. you know, there, there are ways to, to command respect in a very um, professional way. Well, that having that tool puts you in charge. Right. And it, that little tool, when you pass it to somebody and say, here's my, here's my expectation for the job, they read that and know, okay, she's not messing around. You right. And again, like Amber said, you don't have to be a bitch about it or a dick about it if you're a guy. You just say, these are my expectations, right? And when they read that, they can go, okay. And that makes you seem like you've done this before. It's not your first rodeo, and that automatically, in and of itself, commands respect, right? Yep. So number four is set yourself up for success. So what does that mean? So um, you don't have to know everything, but like we just said, have the right tools, get the right education, do your homework behind the scenes, talk to other professionals, be around what you're trying to do, be with your local, your local RIAs. We run, we, we run a local um, group called Action Investors Network here in the Capital Region, and you know we had about 130 people last night, and a lot of them are, that come in probably 30 people are brand new, they're there just getting information, and just being there last night for two and a half hours, they learn so much, so if you can arm yourself, up, they're, set, they're setting themselves up, for success by having education, because the more education and knowledge and tools you can put in your tool belt, the thicker it will get. And you know, if, if a contractor pulls up to your job and they pull out a tool pouch and there's three tools in it, there's a screwdriver and a broken hammer and an ax. Great, that's that's the guy's tools. If a, if a contractor pulls up to your job and they have truckloads of tools and they're well organized and that's someone that has tools. And you're gonna look at that person and say, I have much more confidence in the person with tools than the person without tools. Well, you can be that person with tools by showing up on the job, having these tools, having the scopes to work, having you know everything that you need. So when you pull up the job, they look and say, that's the professional one. And you'll command respect because of that. And that's how you can set yourself up for success. Right? Yep, absolutely. Kay. So we didn't always make the best decisions in the beginning because we didn't educate ourselves in the beginning. That's we, for sure. We were so desperate at the time. We just kind of jumped in with both feet and figured it out as we went along. And one of the things we quickly realized was that we, had we gotten education, we would have dramatically shortened our learning curve, saving us time oh. and probably hundreds of oh, thousands hundreds of, of thousands dollars. Of, hundreds of thousands of dollars in mistakes. Yeah, without question. Remember that cat house we bought? <laughs> I just talked about last night. Oh Actually, my gosh. somebody asked me, we had a question and answer session. Someone said, what was the worst house you ever did? I said, probably the worst one was the cat house. And to quickly get through it, it was a house that was, uh, a woman was trying to be saved, she was trying to save pets at a huge heart, but um, couldn't make, couldn't make a non-emotional decision. And she let 47 cats, I think it was 47, I don't know how you kept track of that, but 47 cats and like eight or nine dogs live in this house without humans. She actually got pushed out of her own house by these animals because there was a flood in her area and people were dropping pets off to her. She didn't know how to say no, right? She, her, her, heart was in, her heart was in the right spot, but she couldn't say no. So the house was covered in cat piss and cat shit. It was, it was disgusting. But, the, but it was a cute house on the inside. So the cabinets looked good, the paint looked good. I thought to myself, I mean, besides the fact that we couldn't well, be in there for more than two reached. seconds. I mean, we walked in there, we take a deep breath and then walk back out, remember that? Oh, it was Walk back in, take a deep breath, <laughs> we're holding our breath, it was so bad. I didn't have the education, so here's where it comes full circle. I didn't have the education to know that you can't just paint those walls. 
I thought, let's just have a heavy duty cleaning because they were they were very nice oak cabinets. They had potential. Mm -hmm. I said, this can't be that bad. Now, mind you, the cats were living on top of the cabinets, so it was a lovely situation. Um, I didn't know that cat piss could actually soak through a hardwood floor and then right through to the subfloor and right down to the basement and drip on the basement floor and ruin all the wood between. We had to gut that entire house. Down to the studs. It down, was lath and plaster too. And the, Oh yes, I forgot that. And then that was all that new kitchen. It was a pretty new kitchen it in was, the house. But it was but We ruined. had to gut it. It yeah. was ruined. And so we had to go through all that. Knowing what I know now, I never would have bought that house. I don't think, I don't think we made any money in that house. I don't know if we, we didn't lose a ton, but we didn't do well in that house. But we learned that was a valuable lesson to learn where if i had had some education beforehand i would never bought the house i would have known that you can't paint something like that you may say to yourself how did you not know that well it, the house looked nice underneath all the smell yeah i thought we could we actually both thought we could paint it yep. until we got in there and did that thing so it's yeah, it, was, it was it was really bad yeah <laughs> so get educated and that will solve a myriad of those kind of problems totally um so number five is be the boss and some of you will have some head trash that you have to get over in order to accomplish this. Um, the first part of that head trash might be that <clears throat> maybe you lack the confidence to be the boss of a man, which most contractors are men. There are some women out there, woo, but most of them are men. She has um, no problem with that, by the way. No, I think they're great. No, I um, meant you being the boss of a man. <laughs> Actually, I've had to come into my own with that because it was yeah. it was definitely uncomfortable at first. That's true. Um, so you have to get over that head trash. And I want to talk about something that I've noticed um, in society and particularly with the students that, that we've worked with. Um, and it almost seems to be more of like a generational thing because like, like how I grew up, for example, my dad took care of my mom. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. She never had to work. So that was my example. So... My mom actually always said, you know, find a guy to take care of you. But as I got to be older and, and you know, my late teens and early 20s, that didn't feel good to me. It didn't feel fulfilling. Um, and I'm not knocking anybody that wants to be a stay-at-home mom because if that's oh, your... No, 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 no. no. I, oh, there's no. like no judgment there or whatever. It just, that wasn't the right fit for me personally. So it didn't feel good. But, but I had that head trash that was like instilled in me growing up that you know, women are submissive to men. And some of that went even back to religious roots, you know. Well, that's the way it should be. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it is in our house. Not. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but, you know, it, the, the point is that we, some of us have that instilled in us and that's something that we might have to overcome in order to be effective as a real estate investor. Um, and so my generation, I, I started to notice a shift, you know, some people still had that mentality and, and some people didn't. Now the younger generation. Yeah, different. The younger generation, I don't think, has any of that head trash or very little of it. You know, yeah. the younger generation seems to be go-getters. They don't care if they're a male or a female. There's no, you know. Or both. <laughs> or both. Whatever. So, you know, there's there's no, like, they don't put these self-limiting beliefs or restrictions on themselves. For me, it was almost like I had to give myself permission or, like, have permission from somebody else to, to go out and do it. And thank goodness I've overcome that. Yeah. But I, I wanted to bring it up because... I'm sure that some of you will be able to resonate with that. Yeah. So um, how can you do this? Um, <laughs> remember that house we did on Studley? There was that contractor that... Yeah, oh, the electrical? With, yeah. yeah. So we were turning this closet. He was a pretty boy. That was a he guy. was. He was he, a pretty boy. He, 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 was, he's kind of cute. I said, oh, great. But, but he also... He was an idiot. But he, he was. Cute. He was he, a cute idiot. We were turning this closet into a bathroom. And so for, for like an ensuite. And... He, I walked in and the sheetrock was up. He was one that always talked to me. And I used to say, dude, talk to her. Right. Several times, I was like, talk to her. I Don't talk to me. And by the way, a side note, men and women, I'm gonna just jump out of line here for a minute, but men and women working together, husband and wife or whatever, if the woman's role is to be that project manager, by God, you have to support her with that. You have to support her. And we did that early on. I would always push them back to her and say, I don't know, talk to her. Right. I don't know, talk to her. Because if you start taking over the conversation like, I am the man, and start pounding your chest out there, then the woman in the relationship will never be able to do her job. And that goes true for any employees that you bring up or whatever. Not that your wife's your employee. Holy crap, that came out wrong. Not <laughs> yes, what I meant. Yes, it did. No, that, that, not what I meant at all. No, so but, I don't but have always been partners. You have to be partners and treat them with respect and never have a battle with your spouse in front of the contractors. Save that for the, the lovely ride home, right? But don't do that in front of the contractors because that'll create weakness and they'll start to see that and they can find those cracks. So my point is support your spouse. So guys, support your spouse. Sorry. Yep. So anyway, I walked in the bathroom and the sheetrock was up and, and there was no GFI installed, the outlet. 
and I'm like, dude, where's the outlet? Oh yeah, I was gonna do that next. And I'm like, man, I, I didn't do 17 houses last year because I have stupid stamped across my forehead. Like I said that to him and then, you know, excuse, whatever. Um, and then a few days later, we ended up firing him just because we realized he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, uh, put, yeah, di yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about, normally you always, you do the rough in plumbing and electrical. wiring for, can I get to my electrical, I said plumbing and electrical. Do you mind if I use my own you words? You said wiring, it's electrical. Get it right. <laughs> if the woman shows, so you'll get to win that battle <laughs> and every other battle we have. So, um, so you're supposed to put that first and then put your sheetrock up and he ended up first, you know, so just understand that he was way out of the sequence, what you normally do. But what and really, Amber knew it and he didn't. Right. And the other thing that annoyed me is he thought he could bat his pretty boy eyelashes at me and like get he away did. with it. Yeah. So you always have to keep that I'm the boss boundary. And that's why I wanted to tell that story in this segment is we had to be in charge, we had to be the boss. And whether you have a spouse or a husband or a brother or whatever, or women can do this by themselves too. You don't have to have the backup of a man. No, not at all. You know, we have we have a ton of students that are women either single or maybe they're doing it with their sister or. We had today, so today Lisa came in here and gave us some really, we're gonna post on Facebook, but she gave us a really nice gift of some, and she she's about to finish her first, well she's, she's midway a cancer through survivor. her first, cancer survivor and going through her first flip and yep. she's been awesome to coach and help. Um, uh, I, I can think of Kathy Palmer, uh, well she's married, but she does the business by herself, but um, one of our coaches and she's one of our early students and she uh, she's just, I think, I forget, I think she's on her third flip this year, whatever it is. She's, we have she's, a ton of female students. We do, we do, like, I like love we it. we ended up at our workshops, we have a lot more women show up than I ever thought we would, which it's is It's a good balance, cool. it's 50-50, it's not just a women's. It really it's, is, It's 50-50 yeah. in that room, which is, really, which is really pretty awesome. So we love empowering people, no matter what you do or what sex right. you are, but certainly it's been great to see that, so. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about as far as being the boss is don't forget who is the boss because inevitably other people will put their two cents in and you have to remember who's in charge. And I yeah. see this happen with our new students a lot is the contractor will tell them, oh, you need to do this or you need to do that. Um, with Debbie, remember the contractor was telling her, oh, you need to put a whole new um, deck on and new railing and everything. And I'm like, you don't have to spend the money to put an all new vinyl white railing on. That railing is in fine condition. All you need yeah. to do is slap a coat of white paint on it. You make the decisions. So, you know, and he was trying to get her to put stone veneer around the fireplace brick and. Yeah, re remember contractors really, their job is to make, you know, they make more money when they upsell you with more work. Right. That's, they get paid when they work. So, you know, they're. So don't forget who's in charge. Yeah, their intentions are not always pure, right? So it's a good idea. And what they're saying might make it look pretty. That's certainly good, but will it change the, the saleability of the house or the sellability of the house, or will it change the eventual outcome of the price tag? It may or may not, so make sure that you understand all that. Right, mm -hmm. and whether it's a contractor or whether it's even friends trying to tell you what to do, or I would do this if I was doing it, or I would do that. You know, no. sometimes you can get too many cooks in the kitchen too. So just don't forget who's the boss and don't forget to, to take those reins when you need to. So let's recap a little bit. So the top five tips um, of how a woman can succeed in real estate, so. Number one is use the skills that you already have and transfer those from your home life to your business. Number two is to be confident, be confident. Number three is to develop a tough exterior. If you don't know how to do that, just talk to Amber. She'd be more than happy to help you with that <laughs> one. Number four is set yourself up for success. And number five is be the boss, baby. So, um, I already talked about that, didn't I? You did. Good. So I talked about before, I'll, I'll recap it again, but as a partner, just make sure that you're there to support your wife. That's probably the most important thing you can do as a, as a husband, as a spouse, as a partner, is to support um, or your significant other. Make sure you support them in what they're doing and, and always make sure that if, if they are the one that takes on the role to be in charge at the site, then by God, let them do it, right? Let them do it and empower them. Let them fall on their own. You may see them falling and you may text them. Amber and I have had text conversations. If I see she's off track on something early on, or, or she might text me and go, no, no, you said that wrong, okay. So work together as a team, because the, the more that you come together as a team, if you're working as a team, the stronger you'll be and the more the more um, respect that you'll command. You can help your woman be able to command a lot more respect by by helping support that, guys. So Absolutely. So as women, so many times we are such multitaskers and we try to be these super women that can do it all. Um, and things will fall through the cracks if you try to do that. And then you kind of feel like a, a failure at almost everything you're doing, whether it's your home life, your marriage, your relationship with your kids. And I just want you to know that, if, you know, if you're watching this podcast, it's for a reason. It's because maybe real estate resonates with you and you want to do it, but you just lack that confidence or the, the, you have that fear of getting started. And I want to remind you 
that you deserve happiness, you deserve fulfillment, you deserve success, you deserve to have fun, you deserve to not have mom guilt, you deserve all those things. So if real estate is something that, that is interesting to you, get educated, you know, follow Glenn and I on social media, come to one of our workshops, but get educated and dive in and, and live the life that you deserve. Amber has speak, she's spoken to you guys today from a position of starting out with all the things that we talked about having, really almost not having, and then you've built all those. Oh yeah. So you've built all those from scratch. So I want you to know, it's not like she was just born with all these skills. She's had to build them over the past, was it 13 years now, flipping house and building a business and, you know, again, living with me, which is a full-time job in itself and all that. So we've had to work that all out together, but she's worked this all out herself and she's built that through herself. As much as I wanted to help, there's nothing I can do. Everybody has to build their own their own selves and she's she's a self-made person. She's done that for herself. And that's why I love and respect her so much. So. Thanks, babe. Anyway, so if you have thoughts or questions, please make sure you post them here. If you if you like this, you know, give us a review. Um, that's something not a lot of people do on iTunes, but if you want to, give us a review. It'll help our word get out there. If you think that what we're saying can help other people, please do me a favor. I'm not sure how you do it here in iTunes, but find a place to give us a review. If you think it's five stars, please give it to us and give us the comments. We're going to make sure we answer them personally. We do that all ourselves, so we'd love to, uh, to do that, and we appreciate you guys listening today. So you have been listening to the Real Estate of Mind show. We are your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. As Glenn said, you can find us all over social media. Make sure you like us and review us and share us. So we will see you guys next week. Remember that everyday people really do create wealth through real estate investing. The only question is, will you be next? See you next week. See you there.